Hi, thanks for coming back. If you clicked on this video, you probably have questions on how to set up a boring bar. So today, I plan to give you a high level overview of what it takes to set up a boring bar in a CNC lathe with a focus on the ADEL lathe. The tools that we're gonna use are a pretty standard small boring bar, and we've got a couple of tool holders. These are all 0XA tool holders, again, that fit on the quick change tool post for the ADEL. The same principles are gonna apply, generally speaking, however big your lathe is. This is a small boring bar that comes with the Deluxe Professional Lathe Toolkit that a lot of you got with your 8L, or will get. This is a pretty standard boring bar tool holder that comes in the tool holder kit with the 8L. This is a boring and facing tool holder that we're gonna focus on today because I think this is a a more approachable starting point for a boring bar. We'll cover the other one a little bit as well. Before we mount the tool in the tool holder, I wanna take a second and talk about the forces that are gonna be applied on this tool when we use it. I've got a random piece of pipe here as an example, but ultimately there's three different forces that are gonna be applied to the insert as we're cutting. One of them will be a twisting motion on the boring bar. As, as the material is coming in, it's gonna to try to rotate that tool out of the tool holder. Another force will be when the tool is pushing through the material, it's gonna to attempt to push it out towards the center of the hole just to get it out of there. And then you'll have a lateral force where the tool is trying to be pushed into the tool holder. And we're gonna to attempt to set this tool up in a way to combat as many of those forces as possible. One of the things we're gonna to have to pay attention to is tool stick out. And the, the rule that I use for tool stick out is as little as possible. So if you need to drill a hole that's a half inch deep, this is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna choke it all the way up. I plan on going a little deeper today, so I'll probably stick it out a little bit. And the premise here is that you would step up your boring bar in size the deeper you go so that the rigidity of the shaft makes a stronger cut. So the install of the tool and the tool holder is pretty straightforward. I'll do this in a backwards way so you can see what I'm doing. Ultimately, I'm just gonna loosen all these set screws up and then get this thing set in. Now I'm using a boring bar holder that's got the V-notch in the bottom of it, and that's for a round shaft boring bar. This one has flats on, two of the, on three of the sides, and so I could actually use a standard turning and facing tool holder if I wanted to, because it'll set down flat on that groove. I'm gonna stick with the boring bar holder. Now I'm gonna insert this we gotta think about this. When it goes in the OXA tool post, it's gonna go this way. So I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna give about an inch of stick out. And at this point, I'm just gonna snug these down first. I'm gonna get these good and snug so it doesn't pull out of the holder while we're cutting. There. Now that we have the tool and the tool holder, we need to set the height of the tip of the insert to the center of the spindle. And there's a dozen ways to do this, like any operation and machining setup. Today, we're gonna to use the dial test indicator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this on the, the ways of the machine and set zero on the indicator to a known tool. I can adjust the height of the boring bar until that is at that same height and we'll rock and roll from there. and we'll put the boring bar in so we can adjust the height of the tool to match what we just set up. Now I'm just snugging this to keep those parallel. I'm not actually tightening it yet. Pretty close. And then this is my little trick that I've learned is I'm gonna go right before zero because I still need to come up a little bit more and then I'm gonna tighten and I just adjusted it there. So I'm gonna bring it back a little bit below zero see where we're at and then what I'm gonna do is use the nut here to tighten both up and bring this up to, to zero you have to be really careful when doing this procedure because you can garble up the threads on the height adjustment screw we're gonna do it nice and soft to make it work and I've just got this snug I still don't have it full tight yet we're gonna bring it in this is a very challenging procedure the first couple times you do it, but the more you do it, the quicker it becomes and the more you get a hand for it. 
There we go. Smack on. All right, next step here is to tell Pathpilot the particulars of this tool. So I'm gonna pull this out, get it out of the way. Now let's go into Pathpilot and jump into the Offsets tab. Now I'm gonna look for the Offsets table at the top, and we're gonna look for an available slot. Tool 7's clear on this machine, so we'll use it. And I'm gonna tell Pathpilot that we have part number 35632. Notice that it auto-populated the particulars. From here, I'm gonna switch back over to the Touch Tool tab, tell Pathpilot we have Tool 7 on the tool holder, and now I need to tell it that we have a right-handed boring bar with the insert facing up. So when I click on that, it's gonna set the tool tip. Conversational's gonna need this especially uh, when you're trying to run programs. Now, let's cover if you have a boring bar that you didn't buy from Tormach. At this point, you would just go into the description field and you can just start typing some of these keywords listed below to tell Pathpilot what you've installed. So I'm gonna tell it I've got a boring bar. Notice that it turned purple because it recognizes that keyword. I'm also gonna set a few key factors like the front angle of 93 degrees, the back angle of 13 degrees, and I could get into the material type and the coatings and all that. Uh, we'll leave this be for now. And now we're ready to start doing some touch offs to tell it where it is in X and Z. So I think the first thing we're going to do is go back to our master tool or our known tool. And we're going to do a face cut in Z and then I'll set the tool off of that. We're going to put a known tool in. We're going to tell Pathpilot that we have tool one in the tool holder. This is a saw cut end, so I'm going to go ahead and do it a couple times. A few passes at it. Okay. Now, without moving the tool in Z, I'm going to Z0 on the work offset. Now we can go back and put the boring bar in. And we're going to use a 1, 2, 3 block to touch off against that known zero point. Put the boring bar in here. I'm going to tighten that down. I'm going to tell Pathpilot that we have tool 7 now. I'm going to step in tense in Z positive until I can fit this block snugly in between the insert and the material. And I'm just going nice and slow, and I'm trying to make sure to hold this flat against the material, make sure I don't put a twist in it. There we go. So now I've got a nice snug fit for my block in between the insert and the stock. So now I'm just gonna tell Pathpilot that we're one inch in Z right now. And I'm gonna to touch the tool, and that sets the tool offset based on that master tool that we just set it up against. The next step will be to set the X, but first I need to drill a hole and then reference against the inside of that hole. We need a half inch hole for this boring bar for clearance. To figure out where we are in X, we're going to get it pretty close to a half inch and we'll set Pathpilot that way. And then we're going to do a skim cut on the inside and we'll measure it. And we'll do the same thing you do when you're setting up your profiling tools on the outside. We'll do a skim cut, we'll draw it back in Z, we'll measure where the new diameter and then we'll set the boring bar to that diameter. I'm just going to set my X to tense and bring this towards me until I scratch it. So that's about a half an inch. And there's tool seven. And then I'm gonna say, okay, so we've done a, just by hand scratched a half inch. So I'm gonna tell Pathpilot we're exactly a half inch, but now I'm gonna jog the machine out. And I'm gonna do a very similar skim cut as I've done in the past. And I'm just gonna make sure that my Z is still set up. So we'll say that's Z zero. Now I'm gonna close this up, spin the spindle. I'm just running nice and slow on this one. 
I'm running 2,500 RPMs. I'm going to move this thing straight out. And Z, to measure the diameter of the board that we just created, I'm going to use a set of telescoping gauges. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to put it in the hole and let it expand all the way out. And then I'm going to tighten it back up. Bring it out nice and gentle. And then we'll measure it. So this shows 0 0.52075. So at this point, we'll go back to PathPilot and we'll tell it that we're at 0 0.52075 and we'll touch X. I wrote a simple conversational program. I'm going to just do some nice, easy feeds and speeds for now. Uh, and let's just see how it does. Sweet! Let's see how close we got. Seven five three. That means we can tune it in a little bit more. Seven five three three. So I'm gonna move this machine. Now this is a, a way that I comp out a machine sometimes. And I'm gonna go to G zero X zero point seven five, which is where that last bore uh, finishing pass went. And now I'm going to tell PathPilot that we're actually at 0.7533. And I'm going to touch the X. And that'll help tune this in to finalize the adjustment of this tool and its tool offsets. And I'm going to kind of rock this back and forth as I go in. We're going to cut something out of this goofy piece of scrap. Okay, let's drill a big hole in a big piece of stock. Let's put the boring bar on. And during the initial tool setup, we just did a small bore, but I went ahead and chucked in a piece of two and a half inch stock, and I'm gonna make a much bigger bore just to show you what this process looks like. Ultimately, the same cut feeds and speeds apply. I'm just gonna go into the cut a little longer, make multiple passes to get a nice big bore. All right, now that we've made a few things, let's recap what we did today. We installed the tool in the tool holder. We adjusted the height of that tool to be on spindle center. We set the X offset and Z offset in PathPilot for that tool. And then from there, we just kind of ran a simple program to bore a piece out. I went ahead and made a bigger bore just to show to you that it's the same process with just different specs in your program. This is 6061 aluminum. This machine can handle a lot more materials. This is just kind of what I wanted to run to, to make a conservative test to get you guys going. This video wasn't meant to be an exhaustive deep dive into boring. I really just wanted to give you a starting point. So good luck. Go make something and let us know if you have any questions. Have a good day.